and welcome back to Kids Church! Today is a very special day because it's Father's Day! It is Father's Day. But before we start our service, let's begin with a prayer. Teacher JC? Alright, let's all put our hands together. Let's bow down and let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for giving us another day to spend time with you. Lord, thank you for our families and thank you most especially for our fathers, our uncles, and our grandfathers. They have been a very big part of our lives and we pray that you would continue to bless them and continue to give them wisdom. Lord, we also pray for our service today. We pray that we would learn a lot from you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen! Amen. Welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's my line. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hi, and welcome to Craft Time with Teacher JC. Hey. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum and JC. So, Teacher JC, today is a very special day. As we've mentioned, it's Father's Day. So, we're going to start our kids' church service with some crafts. Ta-da! So today, do you know what we're gonna make? No, not really. Not really, no. We're gonna make a Father's Day card oh. for our fathers, uncles, grandfathers, or any father figure that you have in your life. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> okay, so I usually do this for the small kids' services, but teacher JC here is gonna help me out so that we can do it in the big kids' yeah. services. Did you guys know that I'm an artist? Did you guys know that he's an artist? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Okay. All right. So okay, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. So for this craft, we will need some scissors. Can you show everyone our scissors? Scissors. Be Double careful with it though, because you know they're sharp. Yeah, you have to be careful. Next, we need some double-sided tape double -sided or glue. Tape or glue. So I like using double-sided tape because it's not messy, but glue will work just fine. We'll also need a pair of scissors. Again? Yes, because we're two. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and we'll need a marker. I'm using glue because it's the only marker that I have <laughs> in lockdown. So you can use whatever marker you have. Maybe be blue, red, green, yes. or rainbow. I don't know. We'll need crayons, crayons and we'll need a bunch of colored papers. So you just need to pick one color for your card or if you're creative, you can make it two-toned. And we'll also two need white sheets of paper. Ah, I wonder and, what that's used for. Yeah, and, 
And? Optional is we need something that we can trace that's a circle. Mm. Unless you can draw a perfect circle freehand. Can you draw that? Of course not. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> so you can use anything. We're going to use this tape right here because we're going to trace it. Okay. But you can use like a lid of a jar or something. All right, Teacher JC, you're going to help me out. So let's start with colored paper. What color are you going to use? Blue. Blue, okay. So I'll be using this periwinkle or pinkish purple. Oh, what's this color? I don't know. Pink. Pink. <laughs> okay, first step we're going to do is fold the sheet in half lengthwise. Like this. <laughs> so once you've folded your paper lengthwise, we can now cut it. Oh, okay. So see, that's why we needed two scissors. While we're waiting for Teacher JC to Ish. cut his sheet of paper, I want to ask you guys what your plans for Father's Day is. So you can comment down below. It can be just a simple celebration or you giving a card or having family dinner. Right, JC? Correct. Okay. Are you done? done. <laughs> okay. So now we have these sheets of paper. All right. Awesome. So the next step is to take some white paper. And remember the circle thing that I said that we're going to trace? So trace a circle on the white paper and then cut. Okay. Okay. So aside from tracing that circular thing, we're also going to trace our hands. But since JC and I have adult hands, we decided to print tiny hands. Do we cut it now? Yes, you okay. cut it. So while he's cutting that, I'm going to cut these hand outlines. summarize what we have right now. We have a half sheet of paper. Mine is pink and his is blue. Then we have one circle cut out. Ta -da. Oh, and and the hands. two hands. Yep. The left and the right. Pull them up high. So clean and bright. <laughs> okay, so now we're ready to assemble. Yay! Using double-sided tape, let's attach the hands. Or glue. Or glue. Attach the hands to the ends of this lengthwise sheet of paper. So teacher JC is using glue while I'm using double-sided tape. It really doesn't matter as long as it does the job of sticking the hands onto the lengthwise sheet of paper. Okay, I'm confused. Okay, there I'm you go. done! I'm not! <laughs> now we're gonna attach the head. So we're gonna attach it just here, right here. And I'm done! And I'm not! <laughs> Great job, Teacher JC! We're gonna fold the arms inward so it forms something like a hug. Oh. So look, it's like it's hugging you. Make sure that the inner fold does not damage or fold the hand that's inside. A nice card. warm hug. Yeah, a nice warm hug card. Ta -da. Like this. So if you chose like a darker colored paper, for you to write a message here, we'll, we'll need to use light colored paper on it so your dad can actually read what you wrote, right? So with that, let's just take this. I'm gonna cut for you. Not only does it do a hug, it also claps. Okay, teacher JC. You can write your message here in this white sheet of paper in front. But first, let's stick it on. So next step is you have to draw a face on this circular <laughs> thing. And this is where he is better at. And I'm done! Doesn't it look like me? Look. I'm almost done. But, so you can color this if you want to, but I just decided that I want it plain and just the outlines of the marker. You can proceed to writing your Father's Day message to your dad. Guys, you have to see this. It's hyper-realistic. You won't even know that it's just a drawing. You would think it's a picture of Teacher JC. 
that's why it's taking him so long because it looks exactly like him. All right, are you ready for the grand reveal? And ta-da! Doesn't it look exactly like him? No. <laughs> Close enough. All right. So right now we're gonna write our messages to our dad. We're done. Can I read mine? Yeah, sure. So it says, "Dear Dad, Happy Father's Day. Thank you for working hard for our family and showing us what unconditional love looks like. I love you. Love, Plum." All right. Mine says, "Dear Dad." Words are not enough to say how much thankful we are to have you. Happy Father's Day! We love you, John. <laughs> so today we did a very good job honoring our earthly fathers, and our lesson for today is about a father who lovingly welcomed back his own son. And to learn more about it. Let's watch this video and listen to the word. You've probably heard by now that parables were used by Jesus to tell important lessons about the kingdom of God. When Jesus lived here on Earth, his audience was a mix of Jews, Gentiles, Samaritans, sinners, saints, and religious leaders. In this episode, our story started when a group of religious leaders questioned Jesus. Jesus was with all sorts of people: tall, short, rich, poor, high, low, all sorts. There was a certain group of people who wasn't pleased that Jesus allowed himself to be with the lowest of the low. Let me guess: Pharisees. Yep, the Pharisees. They couldn't understand why Jesus, someone who claimed to be a rabbi or a teacher, would choose to sit down and be friends with sinners and tax collectors. I bet Jesus had an answer for them, and that's a cue. Story time, as told by Jesus. There was a man with two sons. He was probably very rich because the younger son demanded that he give him his share of their property. The thing about an inheritance is a child only gets it when the parent dies. So this younger son was basically telling his dad, "You're dead to me. Now give me my money." What kind of kid would do that? Well, let's see. Because surprisingly, the father divided the property between the two sons. Then the younger son said, "Dad, I'll be on my way now. I want to travel the world and try living on my own, especially now that I have a lot of money." See ya. He went on and partied, met a lot of people whom he called friends. Because they were fun to be with, but soon after, the country he traveled to experienced famine. People didn't have enough food to eat or get harvest from because there wasn't a single drop of rain. Because the younger son spent all of his inheritance, he applied for a job with one of the citizens in that country. Guess what job he applied for? Um, a salesman. Nope. The job he was given was to take care of his boss's pigs. Stinky pigs who played in the mud and ate everything they were offered. But that didn't matter. He was so hungry. He even longed for the food scraps that the pigs were eating. Oh my! I bet he was missing home-cooked meals in his father's house. That's exactly what he felt. He said to himself, "Hey, wait! Why am I working here in the dirt, hungry and alone? I used to live in a big, big house with my father and older brother, with servants." And good food. I must go back to Dad and apologize for the fool that I've become. I hope he'll accept me. No way. He might not accept me as a son, but I'll try applying as his servant. The son went back to his father's house. He was probably about a kilometer away when his father caught sight of him, and from a distance he could see his old man running towards him. When they met, his father gave him the tightest embrace. And smothered him in kisses. I can't believe it. Doesn't the father remind you of Jesus? I mean, remember the story started because the Pharisees were questioning why Jesus still accepted the sinners and tax collectors. So what happened next? The youngest son immediately went down on his knees and said, "Dad, I hope you and God can forgive me. I didn't know what I was thinking. I know I'm no good to be called your son again." 
but his dad was so focused on his son's return that he shouted to his servants, Hurry! Dress him up in the best clothes and roast the best calf we got for his return! Let us all celebrate! My son was dead, but now he is alive again! He was lost, but now he is found! I'm in tears. <sighs> I guess an essential part of the story is the younger son's decision to come back. That's what you call repentance. When you realize that you're living in a life of sin and you make a giant U-turn back to God. Our Heavenly Father will always welcome us back, no matter how lost we've been. Hi guys, my name is Teacher Brandel and I'm so privileged to be able to share the message today. But before we do that, let's all begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we can call you our God. We can call you our loving God. We thank you also, God, that you desire for us to be close to your heart. I pray today as we learn your word, teach us what it means to be your children. Teach us what it means to be forgiven. Teach us what it means to see you as a loving father. Be with us in our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great, so today is Father's Day, so I hope you were able to greet your dad a happy Father's Day. Hug him, kiss him, and tell him how much you love him. And I myself, I'm a father of three, and I love them so much. But in me being their parent, sometimes I make mistakes, but I am confident that in these mistakes, God would forgive me. I would say, God, sorry for the things that I've done. Sorry for my mistakes. And I'm confident that God is a forgiving God, and He would give me a second chance in being the dad of my kids every time I make that mistake. And that's what we're gonna learn today, that God is a forgiving God. So let's get into the Word. We already watched the video of the parable of the prodigal son, and we saw that the younger son lived a life where he spent all his inheritance for wild living. But since most of us already know the story of the prodigal son, we'll be reading from the part where he wanted to go back to his father. It says in Luke 15 verse 18 to 24, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. There are two lessons that we can learn from the parable of Jesus. Number one is, sin is an offense against God before anyone else. Hello, Mom? Yes, I'm already on my way. It's just a bit traffic now, but I didn't forget. I'm already on my way. See you! I really forgot. But Mommy won't know. It's just a white lie, and I'm really on my way now. So I guess that would be okay. Wait. It says in Psalm 51 verse 4 that in you and you alone that I have sinned and I have done evil in your sight. I think I have to call mom again. I think I have to tell her the truth. Hello mom. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot and I'm just about to leave now. I, I, I fell asleep, but I'm really on my way, about to leave the house now. I'm sorry for not telling the truth. See you, we'll prepare together. Bye, love you. The younger son knew that he sinned before God first, before he sinned against his father. Sometimes we think that if we don't hurt anyone, if the person is not offended, I can do all these things. I can do bad things as long as I don't hurt anyone. It's okay, but it's never okay. We have to know and we have to be conscious that when we do something wrong, when we do sin, 
we are first and foremost offending God. Sometimes people put categories when it comes to sin. Sometimes we put it as a big sin, and this one is a small sin. When it comes to lying, it could be just a white lie. So this person wouldn't even find out, and this person would even feel good. But no matter how hard we try to cover it, sin will always be sin. Imagine you're, you're playing football, and you try to kick the ball to the goal and you were able to hit the pole just a small inch and the, the ball would have gone in you still missed the goal and it's the same thing when we sin against god we always miss the mark so my prayer for all of us is that we would see sin as not just an act that we do oh i lied oh i did this one but whenever we sin we offend god the second thing that we could learn is that God is full of compassion, mercy, and grace. Compassion is where God extends His heart to show kindness, pity, and concern for us. Mercy is not giving the punishment that we deserve. And grace is giving even more than what we deserve. And sometimes we have a lot of ways to think about our sin. Maybe it's a big sin, God will not forgive it. Maybe it's a small sin, I should not even confess it. But no matter how big our sin is or how small it is, God is forgiving God. Check this out. I have here two kinds of fruits. I have a grape and I have one banana. So if I eat this one, this will surely fit my mouth. Mmm. Yum. I can eat it in one sitting. How about this big banana? Do you think I can eat this in one go? Let's see. That was hard, but it was it was still able to fit. But you know what? Sometimes when we look at the bigness of our sin or the smallness of our sin, sometimes sometimes we think maybe God will not forgive me because I have a big sin. But you know what? No matter how big your sin is, God's heart is bigger than that. The same in the story. The father welcomed his son with arms wide open. When we repent, when we say sorry to God, God does the same. He welcomes us. He forgives us with arms wide open. For a power truth, it says here that digging deep into God's word teaches me how to live my life. And it, it says in our power verse that do what God's teaching says, do not just listen and do nothing. James 1, 22. And that's my prayer for all of us. The things that we get to learn about God when we dig in scripture, when we dig and study the word of God, you will be able to do it as well. You know, just the same in the story when the son went home and the 
father ran and opened his arms to accept him and forgive him, show his love. God does the same for us. We all sin. We still sin. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But you know, God loves us so much that He sent Jesus to die on the cross so that you and I can be forgiven. You and I would know what it means to be loved by our Heavenly Father. So my prayer for all of us that no matter how big we think our sin would be, let's run to our Heavenly Father. He would accept us and forgive us with arms wide open. I'm sure most of us have heard the story of the prodigal son a million times, right? Yeah, I've heard it a lot of times. But it's a great reminder that God is ready to forgive us always. Yeah, in fact, He's waiting for us to come to Him. He is our good and perfect Heavenly Father. Yeah, so search your heart. Is there a sin that you haven't asked forgiveness for because you're too ashamed to admit it? Because sometimes, Teacher JC, I feel that way. I feel that maybe the sin is too hard to forgive, but that's a lie. God is always ready to forgive us, right, yeah. Teacher JC? So if there's one thing that God wants us to do, is to simply go to Him and ask for His forgiveness. So our challenge question for the day is, what do you do when you know that you have sinned? All right, so don't forget to comment down below. See you guys next week. Bye! Bye! God bless! Yeah.